God bless you all. God is with you. And also, may we be speakers of the truth who look to the day of Jesus Christ. The time, the day will come when the Lord will recognize and glorify you and me. Do you believe that? Say amen. The faith in Jesus, the faith in Jesus starts with our answer to the question, who Jesus is. Who is Jesus to you? <clears throat> is he a historical figure, a good teacher, or a founder of religion? Or he is the Son of God, which means God and the Christ, your Savior. Some people argue that they can accept Jesus as a great philosopher or a teacher who taught valuable lessons to the world. But they said, we cannot accept that Jesus is the Son of God who is God. But you know what? This claim faces a clear contradiction. Why? Because Jesus himself proclaimed and introduced himself as the Son of God who is God. This leaves us with only two possible scenarios. It's like that. Jesus either a lunatic, crazy man who claimed to be God, or he truly is God. But nobody, no one dares to categorize Jesus as a lunatic, crazy man when they study his life and his teachings. Absolutely, they cannot do that. So in truth, there is only one logical conclusion we can draw. Jesus is the Son of God who is God. He is the Christ, our Savior. As we have studied chapter 8 and 9 of the book of John, yes, Jesus is the light of the world who came from the heaven. Jesus is the Messiah, Savior, sent by Heavenly Father to deliver us from sin and death. Jesus is the Savior who pleased and fulfilled the will and the work of the Heavenly Father for our salvation. That is Jesus. This confession, our confession, immediately and naturally provides the answer to a different question. How should I to live? How should I live? How I ought to live? The answer is very simple. We must believe in Jesus. At the time, that meaning is like that. Believing in Jesus is to follow Jesus as the light of the world. And that is, reside, that is to reside in his word. In other words, we must belong to God. We must honor the Father God and no one else. And we must keep his words. By this, of, by this way of life, we can gain the light of life. That means we become free from sin and death. We can have the power to call God our Abba Father. That is true freedom. And then the people who gain this life will never see death. That's why Jesus said in the verse 51, he said like that, truly, truly, I say to you. Yes, that means, listen carefully, it's a very important point. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my words, he will never see death. Actually, it is a verse about eternal life. Eternal life. Right now, we live the days of flesh, but our time on this planet, actually, it, it, it transcends through the knowledge of only one true God and Jesus Christ who stands by only one true God. That is eternal life. 
that is eternal life. And then, as you know, when we are done with the days of flesh, we're going to sleep here and we're going to wake up in the Father's house in heaven. That's what we believe in. That's why we can say we have already, already we have eternal life, even though we are walking on this life journey. Jesus gave his precious words to the people, but the Jews was not able to understand at all. In absence of faith, they cannot understand Jesus' words at all. They remained ignorant. In ignorance, they just mocked and prosecuted Jesus. That's what Jews did. So that they said to Jesus like that today's scripture 52, the Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. You have a demon. Actually, Jews were children of a demon, right? But they said to Jesus, oh, you have a demon. That means you are crazy. Actually, they are crazy, guys. But they talk to Jesus, you are crazy. It's nonsense. But uh, the reason is like that. They, uh, the, uh, the reason they said is like this. In the verse 20, uh, 52, Abraham died as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. They said, hey, Abraham died, prophets died. You said if you keep my words, he or she will never see the death, never taste the death. Are you kidding me? They said like that. And then 53 says like this. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? They cannot accept what Jesus taught. They could not because they don't have faith in Jesus. So that they just ask Jesus again in their level. Actually, their level is a childish level. They are ignorant people spiritually. Even though they Jews and they Jews leaders and they are very religious part people, they didn't know anything. But Jesus answered them again. Jesus answered them again. You know what? As disciples and followers of Jesus who follow and dwell in his words as the people of God, you and I face the same question from the same type of people Jesus did, as Jesus did. These questions are not actual questions that seek an answer, but more of a mockery or an offense. It's asked as a strategy of argument to mislead and draw out an excuse to attack us. But for us, their questions allow us to look back and confirm our identity. Who do I make myself out to be? This is the question the world and faithless generation used to challenge us, but it is also a question we must ask ourselves all the time before God. And we can find our answer from the word of Jesus, our Lord. Who do you make yourself out to be? How should we answer this question? This is today's message we have to listen to. Number one, our answer should be like this. I am the recognized of the heavenly Father. That should be our answer. The recognized of the Heavenly Father. Our first answer must go like this. I strive to be glorified and recognized by God only. When God recognizes you and me, you know what? He will glorify you and me. Just said like that. Look at today's scripture, verse 54. 
Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, whom you say is our God. The main point in Jesus' self-introduction is that the Heavenly Father glorifies Jesus. Jesus didn't glorify himself. He never sought glory for his own. He never sought glory from people also either. Jesus always glorify and honor the Father God and look toward the moment when the Father glorify the Son. That's the main point. That's the main point. When Jesus proclaimed his victory in the chapter 16, after that proclamation, uh, Jesus prayed to pray God as the, uh, the, 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 the uh, priest. So that is chapter 17. At the time, the first line of Jesus' prayer like this. Look at the John 17, 1. After saying all these things, after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. That's what Jesus was always interested in. Just pray to be glorified solely for the purpose of glorifying the Father God. The Heavenly Father glorifies Jesus finally. By focusing on glorifying God, we confirm that it is only God who recognizes and glorifies us. So that how could we, how could we look at that? God's recognition as he, uh, when he glorifies us. When he read of verse 55, we can understand how to do. Continually, he just said, but you have known him. Yes, they didn't know God, even though they were Jewish people, Jewish leaders. They thought they knew God, but they didn't know God at all. But just said, I know him. This knowing is intimate knowledge. It's not about information. It's about intimate knowledge, so-called uh, experiencing knowledge. God, I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Those who don't know God always attempt to glorify themselves. People who think so greatly about themselves and always violate the truth, they are a, a, a Oblivious about God. When one is ignorant of God, about God, the thought of obeying God's law, God's word, cannot even occur. They are very busy to boast themselves. They want to be hero or heroine. No. Uh, the reason they do like that is because they don't know God. Even today, so many people who seek to glorify themselves are those who don't know God. They refute, deny, and mock the message of God, and they are incapable of escaping their childish level. But people who know God, they obey, follow, keep the word of Jesus and do all that they do for the sake of glorifying God. That is the people of God. They are eager to be recognized by God, not by people. We believe that God will make them be empowered, magnificent, and glorified. And in witness of our transformation through the Lord, we give our everything to glorify God again like Jesus. 
We are recognized of the Heavenly Father. We seek to be recognized by God. So when you face the question, who do you make yourself out to be at the time, my answer, your answer must display my desire for the recognition and glory from the Heavenly Father. That should be our answer. So my question is like that. How could we do that? How could we desire to be recognized by God only? When you see, when you look to Jesus' second coming, we can do that. So that's why, secondly, when we have the question, who do you make yourself out to be? Our answer should be like that. I am the seeker of the day of Jesus. That should be our answer. You are a person who desire to be recognized by God and know that God is the one who glorifies? Yes. If you say yes, you want to be a person who seeks, look to the day of Jesus, his second coming. The reason I like I can say like this is from verse 56. To the scripture 56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Was glad. When did Abraham seek the day of Jesus? When? As you know, the, the, the years between Jesus and Abraham, it is at least 1,800 years. But how could Abraham see the day of Jesus? So then many theologians, Bible scholars, provided their interpretation in this matter. An example like that, uh, when Abraham received the Isaac, at the time he saw the birth of uh, Jesus. Or they said like that, um, when Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice and then to receive him back, and then he received the God's promised word, at the time he saw the day of Jesus. That's good interpretation. But in the context of the book of John, today's scripture, Jesus said, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death, right? And we can see, we can see, um, the promise of eternal life and deliverance from death for those who belong to God and obey His words. That's what we believe in. So, and then, as you know, Abraham was a believer and a follower of God. He was a man of faith. He was a person who received the blessing of the chosen, and then he kept following God's direction and keeping his words. That's what Abraham did in his flesh. And also, uh, one day Jesus said, the Lord God is not God of the de death, but God of the living. And also, God, God self-identified as God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. God is not God of death, but of living. But, but God said, I am God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. So, my, my question is like this. Abraham is dead or alive? Dead, alive, dead, alive? Yes, both. <laughs> yes, actually, as you know, his body, his body had decayed. But he belongs to the living. Abraham rejoiced and seek the day of Jesus, not just in his days of flesh, but in the world of eternity as well. Remember, my brothers and sisters, Eternity, eternal life is not illusion. It's reality. It's a reality. 
It's not dream. It's real. You should remember this truth. Abraham, Abraham saw the day of Jesus and he was very pleased. And also right now he had, he had seen the day of Jesus first coming and with us he gonna expect Jesus second coming also. The same goes for us today. If you you and I believe in Jesus and when you and I when we want to be recognized by God only, yes, we have to look to the day of Jesus the second coming. To live in obedience before the word with the knowledge of God, striving to glorify the Lord, that is to eagerly wait and seek for Jesus' second coming. We will wait for his second coming, enjoy and rejoice with uncontainable delight and pleasure when you finally greet the returning our King. That's why 1 Thessalonians chapter, six, chapter 4 says us like that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left, we be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. It is so-called rapture. Right? Yes. We seek for, we look to this day so that we have to encourage one another with these words. Why we need to why we need to encourage each other? Because we, we have suffering while we have faithful journey. It's not easy. Because this is not eternal kingdom. This is not the heaven. We are on this planet. We are on this planet that always against God. So that we have many sufferings while we want to be recognized by God only. And when we look at, look at the things God glorifies. There are so many sufferings and struggles and problems and difficulties. So that we need to encourage each other. At the time we are able to rejoice always, pray continually, and give things in everything because we are eager eager and excited for the day of Jesus yes right that's why uh, in the first Thessalonians chapter 5 uh, we can read rejoice always pray continually and give thanks in everything that's why God commands us like that Abraham's road Abraham's faithful life was not easy either. Read the Bible. It was not easy. But he still walked the path of faith as the chosen and called and finally received the inheritance blessing as recognized. Abraham was able to walk this path because first of all, the grace of God. And then second of all, like Jesus said, because he saw the day of Jesus. Same to us. We can endure our life journey and we can keep following Jesus' words, Jesus' direction, even though we are here. That reason is like that, first of all, because of the grace of God. And second of all, because we look to the day of Jesus, his second coming. Of course, many things happen on the path of life. If you, you want to do something for the church, 
You know what? So many people talk about that. I don't understand it, but bad things happen, right? Have you been? No? I have experienced a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So many times I have experienced like that. But you know what? At the time, we are angry. It's, it doesn't feel good. I hate that. But when you pray before God, the Holy Spirit reminds us to remember Jesus' second coming. This reminder resets our perspective. And then we can say like that, if you not repent, you are doomed. And then we're going to sing like that. Do you remember that? Soon and very soon. My king is coming. Soon and very soon, my king is coming. Robe and righteousness and crown will love. When I see him, I shall be made like him. Resume. I will be with the one I love. With one way face I'll see him. Then my soul will be satisfied soon and very soon. Amen? Do you believe that? Somebody asks you like that, who do you make yourself out to be? At the time, you and I must say, yes, I am a seeker of the day of Jesus. I am look to his second coming because it is true. That should be our answer. So what? So just we can say, okay, we can, we can sing before God like that and then just calm down. That's all? No. Because we can look at, look to the day of Jesus, his second coming, we can say like that. Number three, I am the speaker of truth. We must say only truth. Because we are the recognized of God and the seekers of the second coming, you and I can stand as speakers of truth. Despite all the ridiculous persecutions, we persevere. Look at the scripture 57. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? I don't want to say Jesus was kind of look very old or not. It's not an important point. Important point is they didn't understand what Jesus said. They didn't understand it at all. And they just tried to mock him. They want to deny Jesus. That's why they said to Jesus like, that, Hey, you, you, you cannot live only for 100 years, but you said, have you seen Abraham? No way. Ridiculous. You are kidding me, right? They said like that. But Jesus answered them like this. Verse 58, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. These Jews had zero comprehension regarding what Jesus was telling them. Their answer, their question, were only spoken as a mockery. So Jesus makes a statement that they cannot overhear. Before Abraham was, I am. That meaning is, before Abraham was even born, Jesus is God who can only be introduced as Ego Amy. Do you remember that? Ego Amy? That is so important Greek word in the Gospel of John. 
When God said Moses delivered the, the Israelite from slavery in Egypt, Moses asked him, asked God, how Moses should introduce God to Israelite. To this question, God replied like that, I am that I am. That means ego Amy. So that Jesus answered them. Jesus answered the truth. I am. Jesus is I am. Ego Amy. That means Jesus is God. The Son of God, God. He is only Christ. He is the Savior, Messiah. This statement was provocative for those who fail to do, believe or understand Jesus and his word. But on the other hand, Jesus knew exactly how they would react. They were going to stone Jesus. But because it was not his time yet, just hid himself and went away. The main point is like this. Jesus spoke the truth. Only the truth. Even if it meant the obvious result of death threats. You know what? When you proclaim the truth, when you want to speak the truth, people react with awe if it suits them. And reacts with rejection and stone if it shames them. So you have to remember, if you speak the truth of people, they're going to persecute you. But our code, our conduct remains the same with Jesus. We must only speak the truth until the day of Jesus. For this reason, Jesus speaks about the final days and commands us to be prepared because the second coming cannot be predicted in the Matthew chapter 24. At the time, he just ask us like that. Look at the Matthew 24, verse 44. Therefore, therefore, after saying uh, the last day, about last days, he just said, therefore, you also must be ready. Why? Because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Somebody told you he or she knew when Jesus is coming, what year and month and day? That's a lie. Don't listen to them, please. Okay? That's stupid. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Even Jesus said, I don't know. I don't know. Angels don't know. Only Father God knows. So anyway, so we have to be ready. We have to be ready. We must be ready for that. Verse 45, who, who, then is the faithful and wise servant. This servant means doulos, that means slave, slave, who his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing, doing so when he comes. You know what? That's what I want to be. I am a servant of God. I am a slave that must listen to master, my Lord Jesus. The reason I'm here is to deliver his food from his food store to you in a proper time. I want to be blessed like that. I want to be a servant like that. Because I look to Jesus' day, the second coming, I have decided to deliver his words to you in the proper time. 
So then, my brothers and sisters, you must listen to the message of God. And with me, we have to look to the day of Jesus' second coming. And we want to have a desire to be recognized by God only. We have to see that day. Who do you make yourself out to be? Have a right answer. Let us pray. Our Father God, thank you for giving us your message today. And thank you for giving us important question. Who do you make yourself out to be? Even though that question is from our enemies, Father, we remind our identities. Yes, Father, we want to be the recognized by you only. We want to be the seeker of the Jesus day, his second coming. We want to be speaker of the truth only. Make us like that, Father. We want to make ourselves out to be like that. Help us. Help us. Only through your spirit we can accomplish this word. Therefore, Father, Give us your spirit to accomplish, fulfill your word in our life journey. I lift up this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.